In a media landscape increasingly trending towards more is better, big video game releases almost make me sick to think about. Not the games being too big or bloated or whatever, frankly I think that hit its peak about a decade ago and has since simmered down a bit. Well, not unless Bethesda has anything to say about it. But just that we see these studios employ thousands of people for six to eight years to work on one franchise video game, and if the game bombs, we all know mass layoffs are soon to follow. Call me an empath, don't, but I find it hard to meaningfully enjoy those games when knowing how many livelihoods are riding on their not just being successful, but being the most successful thing in the company's history, and then some. Just look at Squeenix's shareholder reports where they must sadly report Final Fantasy XVI only made a billion dollars instead of a trillion. It makes me really miss when games could be small, when they could just have an idea, explore that idea, and move on. So it really vexes me that Mossmouth had the audacity to not only churn out the indie equivalent of a massive six to eight year project with a very reasonably sized team, but that it's easily my game of the year. UFO 50 is the childhood dream of 50 games in one, 50 possibilities, 50 discoveries waiting to be uncovered, except it's actually good. Like, Every game is varying levels of good and interesting. There's a few clones in here, which is what you would expect, including a Metroid clone, Dodgeball clone, Bubble Bobble clone, Streets of Rage Battletoads Metal Gear Cabal clone wrapped in one, but there's so many drastically original ideas here as well, my personal favorite being Party House, a tactical RNG manipulation game about throwing the best house party ever. With phrases like that, you already know know I haven't in my life. But the thing is, even the clones feel new and refreshing. They've all got some small tweak on the formula that it really hits less like a direct Bubble Bobble clone and more like Bubble Bobble from another universe. The games within UFO 50 exist in this middle space of games that have disappeared in the last couple decades in a way that really sets it apart from both the quadruple A massive titles and indies. Almost every game made today is looking for you to beat it which sounds obvious. It would be weird to dedicate hundreds to thousands of hours and time and effort into a game only with the intentions of somebody playing it for five minutes and then just dropping it. Games used to be like that. Or I guess it's a little more complicated than that. It used to be the case that you would go into a game store and all you would have to go off of is a summary on the back of the box and the cover art, which usually is not even representative of the game itself. You're lucky if your mom will let you rent a game from Blockbuster downtown, or if you're really lucky, a friend who already owns it will either let you watch him play it or tell you about whether they liked it. There was no YouTube to look up gameplay, piracy didn't exist, you you had to take a risk. A lot of those NES and SNES games are obtuse and strange because there were no rules other than you needed to do enough to get people to buy the game. It doesn't matter what happens after that, doesn't matter if they only played it for five minutes. Again, there was no such thing as just clicking. And again, there was no such thing as just clicking a button labeled refund on your computer just because you didn't like the game. And a lot of these games were being made as quickly and efficiently as possible. If you look far back enough, you can find some game companies that were turning around a new video game every month. And on top of that, production teams were so small that we knew developers by name. We know Sakurai made Kirby almost single-handedly, we know Code Jima made Metal Gear, we know Shigesato Itoi was the brain behind Mother and Earthbound, those are only the big success stories. Obviously there was still cooperation and additional manpower that got these games to the finalized state, but big names in gaming back then aren't even remotely similar to what it is today. Can you name the creative mind behind Horizon Forbidden West, or whose singular vision gave us Witcher 3, or how about the guy who made Mario Wonder, John Nintendo. <laughs> 
I mean, sure, there are still directors and supervisors and leads, but those games had hundreds to thousands of people working together to make something. I mean, you look at a game like Baldur's Gate 3 and they have staff who write for just one specific character. And don't get me wrong, some of those are still good games, maybe even amazing, but there's something so intimate about not getting just a singular vision of a game, but a game that's inherently limited as a result of that that singular vision. I think the closest comparison in that regard can really only be found in indie games, and if you live and breathe video games you probably are familiar with names like Toby Fox or Tom Fulp just as much as legends like Satoru Iwata. Undertale is a game that couldn't be made by a massive AAA company. It's too quaint, too limited, it's writing too personal, and humor too specific. And yet those are why it's so beloved. The strange strange creative choices and character designs are precisely why it's become such a massive hit. UFO 50 is the most ideal video game I can think of, offering you 50 personal visions of varying length and depth. Today you would never pay $9.99 for a video game that's about tactically throwing house parties you might only play for 10 minutes before saying neat and never looking at it again. You might play a game called Cyber Owls that's ostensibly an homage to the action classics of old, but you'd likely be disappointed to learn it's only about 5 levels long and can be beaten in 20 minutes. Because again, with today's gaming scene, why would you pay for anything shorter than two hours? I genuinely hope UFO 50 inspires copycats, not in terms of similar games, but in terms of similar ideas. Avianos is a game that couldn't be made today under any other circumstance. It's too niche of an idea, too easy to bounce off of after five minutes, and doesn't have enough depth to expand into a 10-hour indie darling. We do have a platform for making making games today that's so agonizingly close to this ideal in the form of 24 or 48 hour game jams, but so many of those games end up like one of my personal favorites, The Yog. It's an amazing game unlike any other, but it's such a short, shallow project that it's doomed to continue slowly fading into obscurity. Why would you pay $10 for an indie game from 2013 that you can complete in 10 minutes? Even those recommending it on Steam reviews say it isn't worth it. But take the Yog and throw it in, say, the comic collection, with nine other similarly length indie games, throw on a $25 price tag, now you're cooking. This kinda already happens on Itch.io, and I know somebody out there is already typing the words, just go on Itch.io, dude, <laughs> oh, I'm subbing just to unsub. But let's be real, it's not the same. The Dread X collections, though, totally are, so L to me. <laughs> and maybe it's naive of me. I mean, Monster Prom, an overtly inspired, aka kind of a ripoff, spiritual successor to the Yogg, was able to sell on its own without adding that much more content and replayability. It just feels that small games are being forgotten more and more. While writing this script, most successful small concept games I could think of, from Samurai Gun to Towerfall to the Yogg, all came out nearly a decade ago. Modern concept games like Umurangi Generation or Little Kitty Big City finding success feels more like extreme anomalies rather than the norm, and titles like Rimworld or Animal Well always come recommended with a reassurance that you can play them for hours and hours. I hope UFO 50 kicks off this small game resurgence rather than being an anomaly. I hope we keep getting small, interesting games presenting a form of gameplay you didn't even know you like. Imagine if Squeenix took every game developer, every artist, every composer, and gave them a month to make 50 small games. Imagine how many cult classics could be found lying dormant beneath the quadruple A bloat. UFO 50 is a dream of a video game and you owe it to yourself to check it out. Even if you don't find your new favorite game, you're sure to find something special. And I gave it a quick shout out, but seriously, just go to itch.io and scroll through some of the games. It's a treasure trove, it is a dumpster, it's everything and more. Just play small games, but before that play UFO 50.
Thanks for listening to me ramble. I've got some more sh sp stuff on the way. <laughs> like and subscribe and tell me your favorite game in UFO 50 minus Party House and Mortal. Mortal is so good, man. Anyways, uh, tell me or I'll know. 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 I'll know.